It's an amazing investigation by the Brennan Center for Justice into the LAPD's apparent strategy of trolling and scrubbing the social media account of people that they approach, that they talk to. Why? Well, we're gonna give them a chance to uh, to argue for it, but it seems pretty ridiculous to me. So uh, they have copies of these what are called field interview cards that police complete when they question civilians. They reveal that LAPD officers are instructed to record a civilian's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and other social media accounts alongside basic biographical information. No word on TikTok yet. Um, but I wouldn't put it past them. The copies of the cards obtained by the Brennan Center also revealed that police are instructed to ask civilians for their social security numbers and are advised to tell interviewees that it must be provided under federal law. Um, the Brennan Center has confirmed that they have not been able to find literally any law that would require someone to give a cop their social security number. Uh, but the cops are just lying and saying that. So there's an internal memo that shows that the uh, police chief, Michael Moore, uh, told employees that it was critical to collect this data, the social media data, for use in investigations, arrests, and prosecutions, and warned that supervisors would review cards to ensure they were complete. They said that similar to a nickname or an alias, a person's online persona or identity used for social media can be highly beneficial to investigators. That's according to Charlie Beck, former LAPD chief. So we're gonna get into this more. But the idea, this is not like, this is not just people that have been arrested. Or people that are on trial. This is like people that cops talk to. They are going to try to get your Instagram account, your Facebook account, your Twitter account, and then just look and see what you've said. What do you think about that, Ben? <laughs> I think that we better recognize the creeping fascism as it's happening in real time. Um, we were kind of talking off air about people not seeing these things um, happening as it's happening, but folks, they're building the robot dogs from Black Mirror. They are monitoring all of your social media, even already. And now they're just blatantly gonna come and tell you that you gotta give them their social security number and your Instagram account. Um, I, I think we better recognize where the real threat is and it's not in some chip in the vaccine. Mm-hmm, 100%. Yeah, yeah. So remember when we were rightfully freaking out because in Arizona they were stopping people that they thought might be undocumented immigrants and asking them for their papers or whatever. That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah that that was unacceptable, and this is unacceptable. Why does a cop need to know what I post on Facebook? It's pictures of my dog. Does he need to see those? What what if I tweet about politics? Hmm. Does a cop need to know that. If I post Instagram photos of me at Runyon. Or something. Why does a cop need that? Seriously, I get why they want it because they are one of the tentacles of the machine. That's why they want any and all information. Mm. But why should they have it? And why should we allow it? Mm. So, especially by the way, when it's the LAPD. So, I'm gonna remind you of a few things they've been up to. Um, last October, prosecutors filed criminal charges against three officers in the LAPD's Metro Division, accusing them of using the cards to falsely label civilians as gang members after stopping them. That unit also had a history of stopping black drivers at disproportionately high rates. And according to the LA Times, has more frequently filled out the cards for black and Latino residents they stopped. Because of course, they can do it with whoever they want and not do it with others. And they'll just use their discretion. They're baked in implicitly racist discretion. So these are the people that we're gonna trust. Those who are using your Twitter accounts to label you as gang members, they're part of the LAPD. There's a good chance they're gang members. But they can I go through their social media, their private Facebook groups to label them as members of gangs, Ben? I kind of feel like it's not gonna go both ways in that in that particular way. If you think about that non-binding resolution that came from Josh Hawley, um, one of the one of the parts of it was specifically saying that um, they wanted to protect the rights of police officers to not be doxxed. And here we are uh -huh. with police officers saying, not only are we going to dox you, we're going to ask you to do it in real time and tell you that it's a federal law for you to give us your social security number. And and John, thank you for saying that. Let, let, let's be sure some of the most malevolent gang members in this country wear uniforms and call themselves cops. Mm -hmm. That's all 100%. Yeah. And by the way, um, it seems important to point out, uh, more than half of the civilian staff by Metro officers and documented in the cards were not arrested or cited. Now you might think, oh, good, no, no, that means they are gathering this data 
for people who don't even merit being cited by the incredibly low standards of the LAPD. And they still have that information. What do you think, they're throwing that away afterward? Oh, well, they didn't do anything wrong, so I guess <laughs> I don't need any of this data. No, no, you're still in the system. Again and again, what are they using that for? They're, they're, they're being so casual about it, they're gathering it for people. They have no idea if they even need to talk to these people. They're just gathering it up, sucking it up, sucking it up. Now. It goes, it, there are some potentially even worse implications. So uh, Hamid Khan of the Stop LAPD Spying Coalition noted that, that the LAPD also shares data with federal law enforcement agencies through so-called fusion centers and has previously used predictive policing technologies that rely on data collected by officers in the field and which can criminalize communities of color. So these are separate concerns. Now think about how they combine with the social media thing. So uh, they take data they don't need. Are they distributing it to the feds, to other police departments? Are you just gonna trust them? And by the way, they believe in predictive policing. They believe that they can use information, demographic information, past arrests, where you live, that sort of thing to decide whether you're a potential threat. You don't think that they're using your Twitter and your Instagram and that sort of thing. Like if they were already getting in trouble for the predictive policing, it's only gonna be more sophisticated with more all encompassing access to your data. Mm. And the LAPD, Ben, so let me, let me give you one more detail. So this is in relation to, um, we, we already knew about this. So uh, Geofedia is a social media um, monitoring site that, that police departments use and others use. So one internal document, which the Brennan Center found, uh, it's undated but appear to be several years old, listed keywords and hashtags that the LAPD appear to be monitoring through this social media tool. And they were almost exclusively related to Black Lives Matter and similar leftist protests. It included um, BLM LA, Say Her Name, Sandra Bland, Tamir Rice, there's one about Donald Trump, it has the F word in it, and the names of people killed by LA police that prompted major protests. None of the, the hashtags on the list were for right wing demonstrations or far right movements, which have grown increasingly violent in recent years and have killed cops in California, by the way. But mm. so they were already searching for this stuff. All of this feels like it's going to combine in a way that makes the the, the already terrible um, predilections of the LAPD even worse. Giving them more access to your data just seems like a terrible idea. And I can understand why a lot of civilians who are stopped by the LAPD would be scared into doing it. They might think that they have to legally when clearly there's no law requiring that they do that. Any final John, thoughts? Yeah, John, you said that they are the tentacles of the machine, right? I'm thinking of the Leviathan. They are the tip of the spear of the monster that is the police state that is required to maintain the immense bigotry and barbarity of this system. And this is just like the leading edge of technology doing the same thing that they've been doing since time immemorial, which is taking from the people and protecting the powerful from the people instead of protecting and serving the people. 100%. I just want to briefly mention um, a lot of people have been talking about this. Um, Portland announced that they will not be enforcing a citywide vaccine mandate on uh, the police force. Um, city employees are supposed to get vaccinated. It was going to apply to them, and apparently they said they weren't going to abide by it. And so Portland is backing off. Mayor Wheeler's like, well, you know, it's a disappointment. We really wish our cops could be vaccinated, but they're not going to be. They're there to protect people. Mm. They might be spreading COVID to them. That's cool. Cops can do whatever they want. They're better than you and I. Did you know that? <laughs> Pretty clear from the news. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.